It's Saturday, January 20th. The Baltimore Ravens versus Houston Texans at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore. And, and while the Browns did little to shake Houston quarterback C.J. Stride's head confidence, um, that tidbit in itself will be more than the more than likely uh, the end of the postseason road for rookie quarterback and rookie coach Ryan's C.J. Stroud, D'Amico Ryan's. The Browns did. They, they didn't have just a bad day at the office or, or pick a bad day to have a bad, bad day. Um, they were who they've been for a half decade or more. Uh, you know, over the last six, seven years, there's not a single NFL organization that's disappointed more than the Browns. Off season after off season, much has been expected of Cleveland. Season after season, they have done one thing or five that has raffled this group off uh, for a winter break uh, to you know, to a February March party that had more to do with basketball than football, and it should not be surprising, really. The Houston Texans versus the Baltimore Ravens in the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, a rematch for two teams who met in Week One, will not be much different than Week One to spoil the you know to spoil this video right now, right here now. The Ravens will exit home grass on Saturday with an impressive victory, as they did in Week One. And the week one 25-9 victory, or the 25-9 final score for that victory um, may be a little different, but it's probably gonna be, the ratios will be about the same. And while there's more than a handful of changes, significant changes to both sides for this week 20 matchup, it's time. It's time the rookie quarterback and rookie head coach were hazed. Now, a safe and secure hazing, a fashion of hazing, that's nothing more than lesson learned or Lessons there, learn from it if you can. The 45 to 14 arse kicking that the Texans put on the Browns will be much the same. At least it'll equate to most of the same painful variables that were the Houston's win, that will be Baltimore's win this weekend at MT. Head coach D'Amico Ryans is a conservative head coach, or I've labeled him as such after watching him this year. And rookie C.J. Stroud has been handled with gloves that, that were they're firm but safe. Um, you know, the words and the verbiage that, that felt aggressive from this group in pregame or postgame pressers, et cetera, et cetera, were, were really more, nothing more than a Texans coach, a Texans rookie coach, uh, protecting his child, his quarterback, like it should be. And there's not any position more important on the field in this day and age of NFL football than the signal caller, the field general. You won't argue with me. It's just you, you'll never win the argument. After all, um, Houston's where they shouldn't be, not supposed to be, where they weren't expected to be, especially where they are on Saturday. And the best of Stroud and Ryan's is yet to come. And I don't mean yet to come as it's coming this week, and I mean it's not yet come. It won't happen this year. That, that may be a bold statement, but it's, it's accurate, and it's true, and I've jumped into glory, and I've seen the results already. Nothing, nothing that was likely or expected happened for the Texans this season. Only the good. And they've hit their ceiling. The ceiling is, uh, has come, and the ceiling now is gone. Uh, Stroud wasn't supposed to be as cool and collect as he convinced people he was a, a week ago. And my question is, was he really? cool and collect. Uh, he, he's taken a rookie gig and turned it into a huge positive. Really, he has a positive that will travel this week, win or lose, but it will be a lose. It's going to be a loss. Uh, to be honest, he'll meet reality. Saturday is the end of the amusement park ride for Stroud Ryans and this Texans group, and they're faithful. The unlikely matchup Saturday already has happened. Um, I'm not saying that week one is a is the end all that's what's going to happen again but for the most part it probably will be even worse for Houston they're you know they're not going to roll with prejudice into Baltimore and advance the conference championships it's not going to happen the mathematical percentages the luck factor that's necessary in any any game to a degree in any game uh, have already happened it's done it's over the good is not great uh, it's not not like Baltimore is what Baltimore has done is taken their good they've done they, they've they have executed over the years and turned it into great. And their only, their, only their only battle, really, at this point in time, is how 
they act, how they execute, how they perform at the party. Can Jackson and Harbaugh navigate the speed bumps, the surprises of a party, with the posture and the swagger they, they handle, like I said, on the ride to the dance, at the dance? That is the question I seek. Not this weekend's divisional matchup, not against the lesser Texans squad. I'm going to jump through a, a lot of hoops right now without having to give much more of the speech that I feel like I'm giving to you. That Stroud's first NFL start, for example, no interceptions. But he, he, was, he was good. Critically mistake-free for the most part, at least for a half, even into the third quarter. You felt like, at least they felt like, he felt like the Texans, or made us believe the Texans belonged um, against, damn it, the AFC's number one seed, right? The turnover battle, yard per play, all really pretty close in week one, but it was week one. Uh, the Ravens come up with enough stops, really, to carefully, without waking the neighbors, or pushing the pedal or juicing the engine, um, to take down Texans. Stroud and Ryan's in particular are going to be taken out of their comfort zone. That they're still resonating, really. It's still, the aura is still glowing from them from last week's big game win, big game bounce uh, of the Browns, should I say. Um, there's not a single, not, not a single gamer, savvy gamer I know, that will be surprised by the Ravens' huge big numbers on the scoreboard this weekend in a big game. Um, and, and do so, really, without breaking a sweat. A big number against a mediocre Texans defense is a given on Saturday. Harbaugh takes his preseason, his exhibition swagger and playbook to the game on Saturday and puts it out there for all to see in full display. With an extra week to prepare, all the difference in the world Harbaugh, Lamar need. The Texans absolutely will lay it on thick, but do it in a professional and courteous fashion. And much like the Texans did the Browns in the wildcard round. 45-14 wouldn't surprise me this weekend. That's probably a little, little large for this particular game. Um, you know, Stroud didn't look like a rookie versus a Cleveland defense. He had 275 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, he stood tall in front of a Browns defense that was second in the league in defensive DVOA this year. The Baltimore secondary, the front and the back, is the best in the league. Like me, like those who have paid attention, including Harbaugh, the deep ball has been the accurate weapon for Houston all season long. It's been, it's been the killer bullet. It misfires this Saturday. Houston was just 23rd in the league in defensive DVOA against the pass. Not, not good enough on Saturday. Not close to being good enough uh, against one of the best, the five best passing attacks in the league. Take the Texans and their 11th scoring offense and take away defending the run and Baltimore will will embarrass, They're not embarrass, but humble Stroud and Ryans on Saturday and the faithful. Lay the wood with Baltimore. Tell me I'm wrong, that they aren't the best team in football, and I will show you a film. I'll show you box score uh, from their matchup uh, against the Niners not a month ago. Thanks for dropping by Wager Talk Studios. Baltimore, Baltimore. The Baltimore Ravens win on Saturday. I'm Tony Finn. Until next time.